Hey guys, Tech Motorsports, Eb here, and welcome to part two of the S52 uh, rebuild. Um, got the block back from the machine shop. Uh, she was uh, decked and honed standard, and then the crank was polished. So everything came out great. Um, cylinder three was the one that was looking to be my issue. Um, I did realize on the first video that I did the breakdown in part one. I didn't really go into great detail on the issues that I was having. And the issue that I was having with this motor was it did overheat, uh, but the biggest thing was I was getting a lot of pressure on the coolant hoses, the inner and the outer. So I fought and fought and fought and I replaced a bunch of items thinking it was going to be something else. You know, not trying to get to this point. Um, so I replaced the surge tank, a new radiator, thermostat, water pump. Uh, I even put new hoses on just because I didn't want the old ones to, uh, to split on me as I was on track trying to you know, narrow down uh, my issues. I also went in and replaced the, uh, the head gasket, think of the head gasket, um, you know, to the poop. And uh, had the head checked out, everything came out fine. And then I still kept having the issues, so it, it led me to, to this right here. But every time I put it on track, it would, uh, it would start to overheat. The higher the revs, the, uh, the quicker it would overheat. And then of course, the more pressure the hoses would have. I could sit there and probably drive about an hour and a half to two hours and keep it below 6,000 RPMs or 6,000 and below, and the car would probably sit around the 205 range. As soon as you start passing 6,000 RPMs, that's when it would start to, uh, to overheat, and uh, which that then put more pressure in the hoses. So that was my main issue. It's the overheating and the pressure rise of the, of the radiator hoses. So. That led me to look at cylinder number three that seemed to be the darkest spot out of all the cylinders um, even after I replaced the head gasket. So that's where we looked at. Um, at this point, um, she should be all square. Um, so what I'm gonna end up doing now is going through the process of just getting everything prepped um, for the stuff that I'm gonna do now um, so that I can repaint the block and um, start going through that. I'm going to put the crank and the rods back in so I can get my plastic gauge measurements, um, which I didn't do that at the beginning. I just went ahead and just tore it apart. Um, I wanted to see where I was at with my bearings and the condition of all that stuff. So now that I, get, I got that done, I have a little bit of time just to sit here and go through all that, get my measurements down both on the main bearings and the rod bearings. So first thing I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to clean the the head bolts uh, threads uh, those are to be honest with you you think they're not dirty but they do get dirty but I'm gonna go ahead and get those clean get that ready and also get the get the block uh, the most important parts that um, I don't want paint on those are gonna be masked off and then I'll go ahead and scuff everything down and then paint everything again to make it all nice in here so everything is gonna be all tidy tightened up tidied up I would say and um, then yeah, so uh, let me go ahead and get some tools going and uh, see you in a minute. Okay, so I got my thread cleaner, um, which is just a tap. Uh, I'm gonna be very, very gentle with it, but all it is is just to clean all the, um, the bolt passages, uh, make sure the threads are nice and clean. I'll go ahead and run this through and I'll use a little, a little bit of air to get that going. And then I also will spray a little bit of uh, a brake cleaner in there just to get any uh, contaminants out of there. So uh, let's start. Oh, keep an eye on that. I'll, um, see if you can end up seeing it, which I'll try to end up doing to show you exactly how much stuff comes out. Now, for a thread cleaner, it's supposed to be a different die, um, which I, I do not have or a tap. Um, so it could go all the way to the bottom of the block and I mean it's not much on this one but you can end up seeing that uh, it, uh, it's still dirty it's still grime and it doesn't make a difference it's from a machine shop 
you always want to go in and, uh, and clean all that out. Um, so the, the tap, um, the thread cleaners, it's a little bit different. Um, I know this is not going to go all the way down uh, because as you can see, it's probably about uh, a quarter of an inch of quarter of an inch that has no thread. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to clean both of them and I'm going to go back with an old bolt that I have, that I um, have cut slots out so it could do the same thing as, as, as that as well. So um, I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm just going to do one side at a time. And I mean, I'm just, I'm already getting a bunch of stuff coming out. I've already bottomed out. Oh, look at all that stuff just coming out. Number one wasn't bad, but number two here, or the second one. Man, look at that right there. That's all on the threads. You start torquing these things down, this will make a big difference. I know a lot of, I've seen a lot of people do it uh, or skip this process and they just go in and run it through. Oh, it's clean, uh, you know, little brake cleaner on it, they're clean. Um, I even tested it one time. I know for a fact it was clean and I purposely cleaned it with the brake cleaner. I'll take that back. I knew it was dirty is what it was uh, because it was a junkyard motor. And by just looking inside of it, uh, it was, it just, you could tell. So what I ended up doing is I just sprayed it all with brake cleaner thinking everything is good and blew it out. And I went through with a tap and die and I, I was literally shocked on how much junk was coming out. So very important guys, very important. So now it's just a matter of uh, turning it over. Uh, I'm gonna install the crank. Uh, yeah, let me, uh, let's get going on that. All right, so I already got the crank installed and put all the main caps back in with the original uh, bearings and um, looped everything up. Um, and I, all I did was just snug them up for now. Um, what I'm gonna end up doing just to um, get things going, I'm gonna go ahead and tear down the pistons. Um, I still, I, I realized I, for, I forgot to get my uh, plastic gauge, so uh, I still have to run to the store and get that. So I'm just gonna assemble as much as I can to get that going so that way when I do start uh, getting my specs, then I will be able to uh, just continue straight forward and everything. And I'll just be able to take one cap at a time and do that, and then the same thing with the rod bearings. Okay, so I got the crank back in, the uh, main caps of the bearings, the rod bearings, the whole pistons as well. I end up putting uh, masking tape, um, uh, thin masking tape all the way around the piston and uh, slid it into the cylinder so that way it doesn't scratch the cylinder walls. The cylinder walls were also uh, pre-lubed. Uh, the same thing with the bearings. Everything was was, was lubricated uh, just like it was in assembly. So I'll plexi uh, gauge it, um, get my specs from there. Um, all right, so I was able to get the plexi gauge, so I will continue the process of going ahead and uh, checking the, uh, the tolerance, the specs on the main bearings and ride bearings. So let's begin. All right, my uh, five newton meters. Fifty newton meters.
two on 70 degrees. And right at it again, 0 0.0015. Just looking good. All right, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm just gonna go run and do the rest of the rod bearings. And, uh, and then when we get done, I'll, I'll look at my chart and then we can go uh, to see what the, uh, the old bearings end up having in, uh, in tolerance. If you remember, I mentioned uh, at the teardown of the motor that cylinder number five bearing uh, looked a little worn. Here's number five, and let's see where we look at, you know, where we actually end up. Actually not bad, still in the white, and as you can see, if I move it over to the green, it falls within the green, but it's right there on the white which is uh, 0 0.0015. So, I looked out. So here we are, here's the chart. Um, pretty much all the bearings came out at uh, 0 0.0015, uh, except for the number six. Uh, that one came out 0 0.001. Now, I looked at it, looked at it, back and forth, back and forth between uh, 15 and a one, and I felt more comfortable as a 0 .001. It was uh, smashed down further uh, than the rest of them. So I went with 0 .001, which there's my clearance right there, um, which is still within spec, uh, which, is, which is good. So here are the tolerance specs, whatever, um, for the crank bearings and they all came out at 0 0.0015 so that's that's great so here are the main bearings and the rod bearings uh, they all fell within spec which is great and um, yeah, so it's going to be time to uh, start assembling. Got a little bit of prepping to do to the block and then uh, start putting everything all back together. All right, before I go any further along, I'm going to uh, get my tap and chase the uh, main bearing cap uh, bolts, um, holes in there so that, that way they're, uh, they are completely clean for the new ARP bolt. So I'm going to go through and do that. And same process as I end up uh, that I did for the uh, the head bolts. I'm going to do the same thing for the crank. So. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is just start cleaning the block. Uh, I got my wire wheel right here. Um, just gonna go through and you know it's a wire brush it's a it's a steel block so it shouldn't harm anything. Uh, I've done many of them like this. So I'm just gonna go through and cleaning just where the oil pan gasket's at and I'm also just gonna just brush up and clean up like the uh, water pump area in this area. Uh, can't get to the back. I'll get to the back once uh, the engine is up and then I'll clean that area as well. And then once I get that done, I'm gonna go through the actual whole block itself and get that uh, pretty much scuffed with this um, so that I can go ahead and lay some paint, um, which will probably be the next day or so. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going and um, I am gonna put my face shield on because uh, these do break off and uh, I don't want them suckers going into my eye or my face because I actually had one one time. Just get me right here. So, well, let's start a little bit of the cleaning process. Well, let me put my glasses back on. All right, here we are, the block. Back to its uh, bare state. Um, all wire wheeled, so all the paint has been removed, or most of it. It's uh, I'll end up primering it. 
um, but I uh, end up cleaning the uh, front area too where the water pump goes and underneath the where the oil pan uh, gasket will go that's been cleaned as well as you can see and um, so the next thing I've got to end up doing is I got to go through a bunch of uh, brake, brake cleaner cans to make sure everything's all nice and clean all in the cylinders especially in the uh, oil pump area um, where the, where the uh, oil goes through and then uh, and then mask everything off and start uh, putting some new fresh paint on there so all right guys so pretty much what I've already done is I've already washed cleaned the block with a uh, brake cleaner so I did uh, the whole entire thing. It's almost I just uh, dumped in in a tank of uh, brake cleaner. So all the oil passages, the water passages, uh, the sun on the walls, uh, the inside, outside, everything uh, was already uh, gone through. So the next step I'm going to end up doing is just uh, masking things off um, that I don't want to get paint on it and then I'm going to let it sit outside for, um, you know, for a little bit while I get it, uh, everything prepped here and then I'll start uh, painting. As I said before in some of my videos, I don't like to paint in, in my shop. So, uh, so yeah, I'll be taking it outside, so. All right, here's the block all masked up. All the parts that I want to mask up and get ready for some paint. So the next time you see it, she's gonna look pretty. Okay guys, this will conclude part two of the teardown and rebuild of the S52 motor. So part three uh, will start right at the actual the rebuild. So stay tuned uh, for part three. Uh, like always, like and subscribe. And um, see you in the next one.